Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new 1X Player Gundam Edition, and this is far from a palette swap. We've got a brand new 12 core CPU, 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM running at 5200 megahertz, and a 1920 by 1200 display. When it comes to CPU performance, this definitely leaves the others in the dust. It's an absolute powerhouse, and obviously we've got a really nice Gundam theme going here. So we've got a new color scheme, and they chose the RX-78 II, which is probably the most recognizable Gundam on the planet. Even my mother-in-law, who was born and raised in the U.S., can distinguish this Gundam from a Transformer. So let's go ahead and get it out of the box. Initially, when I saw this online, I knew I had to get my hands on one. It is absolutely beautiful. I'm a huge Gundam fan, and even if you're not, this is still a really good-looking handheld. The color scheme here looks really great. Love the white against that blue. We've also got some red buttons here. And uh, overall, I think they've done a really great job with this. So taking a look around the unit itself, not much has changed with the design of the 1X Mini, but the internals are totally different. I'm just really loving what they've done here. Got those metallic shoulder and trigger buttons. This thing just looks so good. Even the charger and the cable itself is themed. So like I mentioned, this handheld is rocking a new 12-core CPU, and we'll get into the specs in a second, but I did want to give you a look at this thing. As you can see, we've got these new metallic action buttons over here, looking really good. Same thing with the D-pad and the triggers. By the way, the triggers are linear, otherwise known as analog triggers, so we have full control here. The new color scheme definitely makes this handheld pop, and when it comes to I.O., up top here, we've got a full-size USB 3.2 port and Thunderbolt 4. We've also got a 3.5mm audio jack and our volume rocker and power button. On the bottom, we've got another Thunderbolt 4 port, so connecting an eGPU to this is going to be really easy and we'll definitely take a look at it. So when it comes to CPU performance, this is the most powerful CPU we've ever seen in an x86 handheld. This is the i7-1260P. It's an Intel Alder Lake CPU. We've got 12 cores and 16 threads, base clock of 3.4 GHz with a turbo up to 4.7. We'll definitely take a look at some benchmarks in a little bit. But when it comes to the GPU, we've got the Iris XC with 96 execution units up to 1400 MHz. We've got 16 GB of LPDDR5 RAM running at 5200 MHz, and this really helps out with those Intel XE graphics. A 7-inch IPS display at 1920 by 1200 48 watt hour battery with 100 watt fast charging capabilities. I mean, we can charge this thing up super quick. Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and it comes pre-installed with Windows 11. So I think the handheld looks absolutely gorgeous. The specs on paper look really great, but how does it handle real world gaming? So first up, we have Forza Horizon 5. We're at 800p low, and I can get an average of around 68 FPS. At least that's what Afterburner's telling me by the time I'm done with this run. Remember, we're at 800p low, and I've set the TDP to 15 watts. So it's fully playable like this, and I would highly recommend turning on V-Sync. You can lock this at 60 and run it all day. But these Alder Lake CPUs do like a little more wattage. So I've taken it up to 24 watts, and now I was able to run this at 1200p, low medium mix, no scaling, with an average of 73 FPS. So obviously, with a little more wattage, this CPU and GPU combo does a lot better. It will decrease battery life, but we're not that far off from 15 to 16 watts right now. And remember, this does support 100 watt fast charging. And we also have support for Thunderbolt 4. So what I have here is just a Sonnet dock with an RTX 3060. It's a non-TI variant. It's an older dock. I've been using it for a few years. I've got the cover taken off. When we're done in handheld mode, we get back to the house, we can plug it right in with Thunderbolt 4. So we've got the fan spinning up, I will need to install the drivers, and they actually automatically installed, but we're in kind of a duplicate display mode now, so we've got the same display on each screen. I've just set it up to show only on the big screen. And now, when I jump into gaming, I'm no longer using the built-in XE graphics. I've got that RTX 3060 attached, we're still using the i7-1260p CPU. You can see that it does jump up to around 30 watts every once in a while, but we're getting great performance. I'm at 1440p, high settings with Forza Horizon 5 here. So we've got a lot of flexibility with this. In handheld mode, we're getting great performance, but when it's time to really game, we can plug in an eGPU and just up that performance by a lot. 
All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at everything. It's pretty crazy to see this many cores on a handheld, but at the same time, it's awesome. I've been a big fan of Alder Lake, especially when it comes to emulation. Great single and multi-core performance, and this is no different. i7, 1260p. We've got 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM running at 5200 megahertz, and the built-in Iris Xe graphics with 96 execution units. In GPU-Z, it's showing that it's Intel Art, but uh, it's definitely not. It's still the XE family. But we do have access to the new Art Control Center. This is not an Art GPU, but uh, we can still use this. There are some tuning settings in here, like power profiles. There's not much that's changed, at least for the XE. And when it comes to Arc, I'm sure there might be a few more settings in here. But, but remember, we're still working with XE graphics. Still pretty cool to see a new control panel. So far, everything's been working really well, and the first thing I always like to do is run some benchmarks, and these benchmarks are really awesome given that this is a handheld gaming device. With these benchmarks, it's ran at the stock TDP, which is around 24 to 25 watts, single core, 1707, multi, 10,696. These are absolutely amazing when it comes to a handheld. Moving over to 3D Mark Night Raid, total score here, 20,185. With Fire Strike, we got a 5,529, and finally, we've got Time Spy with a 2,085. This is beating out the 5700G desktop APU. Even with an overclock on that, I can't get these kind of scores. So the benchmarks are looking really good for what we have here. Now it's time to move over to some more gaming. Taking a look at God of War 800p, low settings, we average 40 FPS. I was actually hoping for a little more out of this, but I think it really comes down to the Intel GPU drivers. In the main menu, it's actually really slow. It only runs at about 20 FPS, but as soon as we get in the game at these 800p low settings, we can definitely play it. It feels really good on this device. Moving over to Cyberpunk 2077, 800p, low settings, looking pretty decent. I actually wasn't expecting this kind of performance. We averaged 55 FPS, and if we take that resolution scale down, I'm sure we could run this at 60, but I kind of just wanted to leave it like it is. 800p, low, this is definitely playable. Here we have Elden Ring, 800p low, and we average 47 FPS. Not bad. I mean, it's definitely playable on this device. Looks pretty good at 800p. I was hoping we could do this at 1080p, and we can. Low, 1080p, lock it at 30, but I wanted to see how much we could get out of it, and this is about it at 800. And the final thing I wanted to show off here was Control 800p low at 16 watts. This averages 47 FPS, not bad at all, where at the same wattage the Steam Deck runs at when it's running Windows, which is 16 watts. Really great performance, in my opinion, fully playable. But again, we do have a little more. Taking it up to 24 watts actually nets us an average of 63 FPS with this game, and you'll see it go as high as 80 in some instances. I did try this game at 28 watts, and you're not going to get any dips under 60 with it, but it's kind of pushing it for a handheld running at 28. Alright, it's now it's time to check out some emulation on this device, and this is where Alder Lake shines. I've done a lot of testing with the new Alder Lake CPUs and desktops, and they've turned out to be some of the best for emulation. And when it comes to the 1260p, this is doing a really great job. Here we have PS2 using PCSX2, 1080p DirectX 11, and I don't have a doubt that it would run this at 4K on a bigger display. We can do video out of USB Type-C. Same goes for GameCube and Wii using the Dolphin emulator. Here we have some weed, 1080p, Vulcan back in, no issues whatsoever. I'm 100% positive it would run the Dolphin emulator at 4K. As long as the game's compatible with the emulator, it's going to play it just fine. Checking out some original Xbox emulation with CXBX Reloaded. From the settings, I went to 800p, but I'm pretty sure we could at least run this game at 1080, having no issues at all. But keep in mind, when it comes to original Xbox emulation, it's still a bit early. Um, development has been really slow on it, so there's not a ton of games that are super compatible with any of the emulators on the market right now. 
but the stuff that does play should work out pretty well on this device. And the final emulator I wanted to take a look at was PS3 using RPCS3. I can tell you right now without a doubt this is the best PS3 performance I've ever seen on a handheld. We're at 25 watts running Skate 3 at full speed using the Vulcan backend at 720p. This actually beats out a lot of the desktop CPUs and APUs I've been testing recently. I do see a couple dips down to 59 and 58, something I'd probably wouldn't notice if I didn't have that frame counter on, but this is really great performance given how hard it is to run this game here. It loves extra cores and threads, and with this, we definitely have them. So overall, when it comes to the CPU used in this handheld, it is the most powerful CPU in a handheld right now as making this video. It trumps anything out there from Ryzen to other Intel chips, and I kind of expected it would. Alder Lake does a really great job, but it pulls a lot more wattage than some of the more popular handhelds right now. The Steam Deck will beat this out if both of them are running at 15 watts, but you know, if you don't mind taking this up to 25 or maybe even 28, then this will beat out the Steam Deck. I mean, that's just how it is. The CPU performance on this is absolutely amazing when it comes to a handheld device. I will make at least one more video with this handheld because there's a lot more emulators I want to test out, so if you're interested in seeing that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look at the 1X Player Gundam Edition. I do love the performance this CPU is putting out. It's definitely unmatched in the handheld market right now, but it does pull a lot more wattage. But then again, we do have 100 watt fast charging on this unit and Thunderbolt 4, so we can turn this into a desktop gaming PC very easily. If there's anything else you want to see running on this device, be it an operating system, more games, more emulators, more benchmarks, just let me know what it is in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more, links will be in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.